So here's the Tesla wall connector. It came in this box, has a grab handle right here. Here's the other side, and then the bottom has my shipping details. That's a really nice looking charger. Thank you for accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. There we go. Here we have the wall connector quick start guide with the Wi-Fi information on the top. Template, I'm assuming for the installation of the wall charger. But here is the Tesla wall charger. So here is the garage. As you guys can see, the wire goes inside of this PVC line. It goes right there. And then it comes down on top of the Tesla wall charger. It actually looks really nice. Got this glass right here in the front, has the light over here. So it's been almost eight months since we had the wall connector installed. So let's talk about it. Here it is. We've got the model Y over here. And you can see we're charging it right now with the wall connector. On this side of the garage, you can find the Tesla mobile connector that's connected to the 110 outlet. The reason being is because now we actually have two Teslas. So we have a Model 3 as well as this Model Y. Right now it says two hours and 20 minutes to charge the battery up to 89% from 78%. It's running on a 20 amp breaker. And let me tell you, many homes are not ready for fast EV charging. So when the Model 3 is low on battery, it comes up and gets plugged in with this wall connector. Otherwise we use this level one charging. Now the level one charging does an amazing job overnight. So we come up, park the car, and then during the morning, Morning, we already have the preferred 89%. That's because we don't drive the Model 3 that much. So we can get away with just using the 110 for the second car. Now I'm not an electrician, so I personally didn't know about this. So you guys might find this a bit funny. And again, I didn't know about any of this. Before transitioning into like an electric vehicle, I decided to go on Tesla's website and I noticed that they have the wall connector, which looks really nice. And I look in the information and it said if you have like a 60 amp breaker you can expect to get about 67 kilometers every hour of charge so i was like okay hit the button order the charger and then i get an electrician the car is already ordered the model y that i'm sitting in and yeah so the electricians come and they look and said hey you cannot have 60 amp breaker and i was like why because my house has a 100 amp service it's a big house it has air conditioning which runs on a 40 amp breaker i believe and uh, yeah, so our house could not get more than 20 amp breaker. Running on a 20 amp breaker, it gives us 20 to 23 kilometers per hour charge instead of the 67 that I was expecting. I did ask the electrician how much it would cost if we were to upgrade to a 200 amp service. And they said that the wires run underground, so it's gonna be really expensive to do that. They ended up making some phone calls and found out that it's gonna be a bit cheaper because we do have the electrical box right on our property. This is not an accurate number. I don't remember on top of my head. This was eight months ago, I believe. So either it was minimum $3,500 or $4,500 minimum to change the wire from 100 amp service to 200 amp service. And keep in mind, that's on top of the $2,000 that it almost costed me to install the wall connector and the cost of the wall connector itself. 
So yeah, it was looking at a very expensive thing to run a 60 amp breaker on our house. I did ask my neighbors, I looked around their electrical boxes and every house almost here runs on a 100 amp service. This whole thing is only gonna be an issue when we start driving the Model 3 more or we get like a third electric vehicle. That's when we might have to really consider switching to a 200 amp service. Because put it this way, even if we drive more, we come home and let's say in the morning, the car is not to our desired uh, percentage, which is about 89%. I I start thinking like, you know, the gas vehicle, we don't have it full tank every single day. We have it at half a tank sometimes you go in. Like you don't go to a gas station every single day. So if you don't drive a lot, you should be fine in my opinion with the 110 mobile connector. But if you do drive a lot, I took a trip. It was a 316 kilometer trip from Edmonton to Calgary. And I came home with 4% battery. I plugged in this 110. It ended up saying that the car will be charged to 89%, I believe, in 24 plus hours. In the morning, uh, or actually I think it was afternoon around 12 o'clock, the car was charged to, I believe, 30% battery. And guess what the time said? 24 plus hours. So if you do come regularly with your car battery low, you have to have level two charging because that's that's crazy. So yeah, I hope this video will help you guys understand that you should probably get some electrician over to your house to see, is your house even ready? Can you have EV charger installed? And if you can't have that, then your EV transition might not feel as special as driving a gas vehicle because again, with EVs, you're parked, you're not driving, the car actually starts to drain the battery itself. So pretty much 20 amp breaker does an amazing job, not an issue whatsoever. It's only annoying that we can't have more than one level two charger. YYC Power, thank you so much for the great work. It's been almost eight months, everything seems fine, not an issue whatsoever. And thanks again for letting me to film. And uh, yeah, thanks again guys so much for watching. See you guys next time.